of telematics every year. The presentations of our connectivity providers, our hardware providers, all the people that make, you know, wheel on a better place, right? And I know it's after lunch, so hope you had a good meal. And uh, well, let's get this presentation started. Uh, we're starting right now with uh, Cedric Eloy from Bix, B-I-C-S. Take it away. Thank you. Yeah. So good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you uh, for joining us tonight, today, this afternoon. I'll try to make it as lively as possible. As, uh, as you mentioned, this is right after lunch, so we'll try to avoid everybody falling asleep. Um, a very quick introduction on who we are. I, I guess uh, most of you don't know uh, Bix. We're not uh, very uh, from, the, uh, from this market for a very long time. We come from the telecom industry. We've been there for the past 25 years. We uh, are enabling GSM and fixed uh, network uh, on their international requirements, providing them with all the solutions they need to launch their warming proposition and interconnecting them for international voice uh, carrier services. We are the fourth biggest voice carrier in the world and we are by far leading when it comes to warming services. We estimate we transport roughly 50% of the global data warming traffic through our network. We also have a small capacity business unit um, providing IP transit and, uh, and capacity. Uh, so all these transactions happen through our, our network. And now we have this, uh, we launched this uh, IoT department where we're helping people like you connecting their devices. Um, why do we believe that global connectivity is key? Because obviously you could have one of the best IoT platform on one hand to analyze all the information that are received from one of the best devices that you have uh, in your own solution. But if you don't have the right connectivity to make sure that the device can talk with your platform, uh, obviously the platform has no data to, to analyze. Um, why is global uh, a really key factor, especially in your industry, uh, is obviously you know more than I do that uh, your, your fleet management and your trucks don't always stay in the same country. If there's one vertical where the international requirement is, is key, is definitely um, your industry. Uh, we are going to present you a, a, a case where we worked with one of your colleague, uh, Watnet uh, Technologies. Why Watnet? Because they're also part of the Gurtam Wiseller network, so they're using the same systems you do. Uh, they're located in Zambia. Their customers are a bit all over uh, Africa, mainly in the SADC region, in the southern part of Africa. Um, and they had uh, some challenges, uh, especially when it comes to connectivity. They had several customer complaints and they had the feeling that their service delivery was not really optimal. So they asked us uh, if, if we had a solution to help them uh, improve their offer. Um, the IoT challenge in this case is very much related to, to Africa, which has a very specific uh, requirement compared to other parts of the world. Uh, the GSM technology th uh, in Africa, the GSM coverage uh, within the countries can be extremely patchy. You can't really say that with l by working with one network, the whole country will be covered. Usually you have to work with two or three networks because they, they cover different parts um, of, of the country. Then it becomes very complex uh, to integrate local MNOs in your backend system. Also the operational processes are not the same. Um, the uh, commercial terms are not the same from one partner to another. And you have to combine all this to come up with one single offer for your end customers. All these is, is, is very valid when you target your own market. As soon as your customers uh, start going abroad, you multiply these difficulties by the number of countries that you are um, uh, targeting. Uh, so because of all these challenges, they were using satellite communication, which as you know, is uh, extremely expensive on both ways. First, the, the satellite connectivity as such is expensive. And then in order to use satellite connectivity, you also need to have satellites um, or devices that are able to connect on this satellite. And those devices are also very expensive. So they, they really had a mismatch between the requirement of low prices that is also very specific for the African region and the satellite uh, connections that were providing a very expensive service. 
Um, connectivity requirement is extremely important uh, for people like you um, to reach both to reach new customers. Um, we had another case typically in South Africa where the very first offer uh, they, they, they received when they started working with Bix was for customers and a project in North America targeting USA and Canada. Uh, obviously, when you start to go abroad, all the challenges uh, of, of going to new markets will remain. Um, do you have the internal resources to, to target this new market? Do you have enough knowledge about these new markets? Do people over there know about your company? All this will remain the same, but at least the technical challenge that you are facing um, on, on the, with this regard will be eliminated because you keep working with the people you know, the integration has been done, the pricing is known, all your systems are working uh, correctly. So for you, it's kind of a business as usual from a technological perspective. That also allows you to innovate. Uh, in some cases, the lack of coverage in specific regions can prevent you to target specific verticals or specific uh, areas. So in this case, they came from a pure fleet management company and they started to expand into the agricultural segment, uh, protection of uh, wildlife uh, in national parks uh, throughout uh, the southern uh, African region. So really when you improve on coverage, when you improve on this connectivity, uh, you can really expand uh, beyond your traditional uh, uh, vertical and, 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 and try to go to, to new places. Um, you will also read a lot in the specialized press all these impressive figures about how many millions of devices are going to be connected in 2020, 2025. Um, and, and usually the question we ask is how can we grab a part of this cake? How can we make sure that these impressive devices uh, also benefit my company? Well, we, we strongly believe that this mass scale adoption uh, of connected devices will only be reached by global enterprises that will develop, that will roll out to their connecting devices all over the world. And if you as a, as a company want to be able to target those kind of customers, you need to be able to have a ubiquitous proposition, something that will work exactly the same way wherever the customer decides to go. Some places might sound very strange to you, but if you are targeting, uh, for example, an airline company or uh, a company that has fleet management a bit all over the world, you need to meet their requirements, you need to meet their demand, wherever the destination, wherever the company is located. So it is very interesting, it is really worth considering a truly connected ecosystem. Uh, it might sound very, sound very obvious, but in, in the switch from connecting device to connected ecosystem is very, very important. Um, again, we mentioned the three pillars of the connectivity, the devices, the connectivity and the platform that makes a truly IoT proposition. And the connectivity very uh, often is only a small part of the, uh, of the total offer. Meaning that when you offer something to your customer, including the device, including the platform, the connectivity part of it is something you usually tell them uh, you handle it, go to your local uh, provider, take care of the connectivity yourself. We believe that by, by integrating the in this and coming up with a proposal that really um, tackles all sides of, of the requirement, help you move up in the value chain. And as you know, when you move up in the value chain, you can also come up with better rates, uh, more direct margin for you. There's absolutely, absolutely no reason why you should avoid making more direct margin on the connectivity side if you can, uh, if you can do so and leave that to your uh, local uh, GSM partners, for example. So the connected logistic um, has several challenges. You can see them on the, on the, on the, on the the, the, the bottom part of the slide, but also different requirements. Uh, I'm not going to go into that too much because you know that much better than I do. Um, but uh, we really believe again that if you want to have a proposition that is available in as many countries as possible, you, have, you, you, you don't have really a lot of choice than by uh, talking to the different MNOs in the different countries. And why again, and that was very specific in the case of, uh, of WhiteNet in Africa, we noticed that usually one local MNO, that could be the, 
the GSM networks covering uh, the, the country where you are based, uh, very often they don't have the necessary warming agreements, so they don't cover the whole world with warming. If they do, they might not have data warming agreements in place, so in which case if they have just a voice agreement in place, that's not really helpful for you. And even if they do have a data warming agreement in place, they might not have the necessary price, the costs associated to uh, standard warming versus IoT warming uh, is definitely not the same. So if they come up with data warming in a specific country at a very high rate, that again is not helping uh, your business. So then you need to start talking to multiple uh, different GSM networks in the different countries where your devices uh, might be warming. And then we come back to the discussion we had earlier on the difficulty of connecting and integrating different, uh, different partners uh, on into your, your backend system. Uh, so what we uh, have offered uh, WhatNet and the, the reason they, they, they come to us um, is uh, really truly global connectivity with more than 200 countries uh, covered today so they can really, uh, they, are, they are not scared anymore if a customer says I want to go to, to that place or to that place, they know that the coverage is there. Multi-network access, that's extremely important, uh, especially in Africa, to have more than one network where your devices can connect to, because as we mentioned, the coverage can be very patchy from, from one area to another, but also they, in some cases they have a lot of power issues. So even if you do have connectivity with or coverage with one of the MNOs, it could be that at a certain point in time, the antenna is not powered, so the antenna is down, and um, and then you need to, to have a fallback network. Um, you need an optimized uh, business, um, business model. Uh, we offer them with the whole platform to control this connectivity, so now they can go directly on the platform and they can uh, activate, deactivate this in, they can manage and control this connectivity directly themselves, but also the full stock of APIs if they want to do it via API or integrate our platform with their platform. So it's uh, one uh, single commercial agreement, one single platform uh, available everywhere in the world. How did we measure the success of this project? This project is mentioned for a six month implementation project. The implementation of the service as such was much more uh, quick than this six month. In a, in a couple of days, in a couple of weeks, the integration uh, between the two systems can be done. What's what takes a bit more time is, as you know, especially when you're in the, in the fleet management uh, industry, the trucks can be anywhere, can be driving uh, in a different country for a moment, and you need to wait for the truck to come back before being able to go in uh, the device and change the SIM card. So it's mainly this SIM management, this SIM change uh, that, uh, that took a bit, a bit more time. But what they realized uh, is that they already have less customer complaints, at least when, it's rec when it comes to coverage. So the devices are connected on a much more uh, consistent way. Uh, increased customer satisfaction, the quality of the service uh, has, has improved, and obviously a drastic cost reduction versus the satellites uh, that they were using in the past. So in uh, kind of a summary, uh, as explained, uh, we, tr we strongly believe that the connectivity proposition that you guys need needs to be simple, needs to be reliable. That sounds very obvious, but we see very often uh, extremely complicated business models on the market, and, 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 and even us, we have struggled to understand how, how, how you manage that. Um, you need to be able to manage millions of SIM cards, that's, that's what I uh, hope for you, but at the same time you need to be able to control each and every single one of them. And that's an aspect that's also very uh, often overlooked. Um, a lot of people think, okay, we, we have millions or hundreds of thousands of devices out there in the market, how can I manage the whole stock of devices, of SIM cards that I have? But on another hand, uh, if you have a problem with one single SIM card in one par particular uh, area, you need to be able to solve that specific issue, otherwise that specific device will not be able to connect. Uh, obviously, when you the more devices you have, you need automated food management control, alerts, uh, I can't, we can't say enough how secure the network uh, needs to be depending on the industry. We are serving customers, for example, in the mobile payment industry, uh, the security of the networks come into play. And you also need a very flexible model on both your cost and your revenue side. 
uh, we, we hear very often requests uh, from your side, uh, do you have one single pricing for the whole world or one single pricing for a complete region? Yes, we do, but uh, we would advise you strongly to look into much, much uh, granular proposition where uh, the cost is really uh, as precise as possible because you want to be able on the revenue side of your business to make different propositions to your different customers that are extremely specific to their own requirements. And if you don't have the granularity on the cost side, you are not able to do that on the revenue side. And on the revenue side, it also needs to be flexible in terms of prepaid management, for example. Are you allowed to, uh, to how do you, tackle the credit risk issue? Are you able to offer data packages to your, to your end customers? As soon as you enter that, that connectivity business as well, that uh, allows you to increase your direct margin, but there's also a bit more work that needs to be done in the sense on, on how do you uh, bundle this offer in your generic propositions. That was it from my side. I don't know if you have any questions. I don't know if you have a lot of time, but... Uh, we don't really have a lot of time, but... One quick question. Yeah. Uh, just uh, on a ball part, uh, what's the two megabit uh, size, just ball part cost for this global SIM card? Sorry, what is that? Two meg uh, size uh, cost, just to get an idea. That, that's very different per country per country. That's something we can discuss maybe uh, offline. But uh, as you can imagine, in a country where you have five GSM network versus a country like Greenland, where there's only one GSM network, uh, the, the, the cost might be very different. But we can take it up afterwards offline if you want. Perfect. Thank you so much, Cedric. Cedric Eloy from BICS. <laughs>